Psalms 146. Praise ye the Lord. It's been all the way through the Psalms. God, Jehovah. There is no praise to sports. There is no praise to man but God. Find where you where the, the Bible proclaims give praise to man. I'll find you a perverted Bible. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul, that eternal part of you. Listen, the spirit belongs to God. And God breathed into man, he became a living soul. This flesh will be changed one day. Now for those that go in the lake of fire, Jesus speaks about where the worm dieth not. But you're going to get a body that's different from the body that we have today in hell. The Bible records that we're going to get a new body in New Jerusalem. Like unto Christ. No pain, no suffering, no sorrow. So what you see right now when you look at yourself, that's, that's temporal. And the Lord tarries, it's going to be decomposed in a grave somewhere. But your soul is that part of you when Paul says to be absent from the body to be present with the Lord. That soul is your eternal. Though you get a new body in Lake of Fire or you get a new body in New Jerusalem, that soul of you will be there eternal. You are to praise the Lord that the Lord has taken account on your soul. Now some reject it. While I live, Will I praise the Lord? That takes away the, the teaching of a church that says saints will praise thee. Now you got to remember the Psalms are in the Old Testament. They did not have the revelation or the complete Bible that we have today. Now we know through Paul a born again Christian. To be absent from the body, be present with the Lord. The day that we pass this body, we're going to be rejoicing with the Lord. We do know those that reject Christ and his offering will wake up in hell, according to Luke 16, and to be in torments. We have a greater revelation than what the psalmist has. What he thinks, and is not wrong, is... When you die, that's it. But for the Old Testament Jew, Abraham's bosom, Samuel's told Saul when he was conjured up by that witch, I was resting. Abraham spoke of the of the of Lazarus, the poor man. He's resting. They were resting in Abraham's bosom. They weren't praising God. So the Old Testament sense is, yeah, when they died, there was no more rejoicing for God. That was it. Oh, but when a Christian goes on to glory, it's only just begun. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any be being. And again, when they went to Abraham's bosom, there will be no singing. They didn't know idea what, what heaven beheld for them. Ezekiel gives him a little bit. Ezekiel is much later when he speaks about the seraphim and God being in the midst. They didn't know that. Put not your trust in princes, man. The Bible proclaims, Christian, you're not to be part of politics. That's what a prince was. He was under the king. He is in the government relation. You're not to put your trust in them. When you go out to politics and, and voting, and you, know, you are doing what God commands you not to do. You're to trust in God. And you got to realize the fact is, if you don't like that person in office, God put him in the office. And if the government got dead people to vote and stuff like that, God had them do that to get that man in the office that God wanted. Nor the son of man, and you find that quoted often in Ezekiel. 
You're not to trust in man. You're not even to trust in Ezekiel who is called the son of man because he's just a man. He's a sinner. He can't do what God can do. And Ezekiel was a prophet of God, definitely. And yet he was a man and you weren't to trust him. Your preacher is a preacher. A man used by God and you're not to put your trust in him. And too many do. And that is wrong. Our government puts, well, I don't know anymore, but, you know, armed forces, if you can say that. That's wrong. You know, the Bible records for Israel that there were battles that the men didn't even fight. An angel fought. It says hornets did the job. It said one time that the enemy killed themselves. Gideon had 300 men. He divided them off into, into hundreds and won the victory. David came across uh, uh, Goliath. You put your trust in your faith in God and let God take the interest in you. In whom there is no help. How do you get that? Bible records about man his breath goes forth you know every man breathes I'm the king of the country I'm the CEO I am your You breathe the same air I do. You breathe the same air that a pig breathes. You breathe the same air that a dog breathes. You still breathe the same air that a cockroach breathes. And I'm not to put my trust in you, but in God. He returneth to his earth. Ashes to ashes. Man's frame is dirt, and that's where he's going back to. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you freeze your body. I think they call that biogenetics, whatever it's called. Your body will go back to the earth. In that very day, his thoughts perish. And it's talking about death. You don't think in the grave. As far as the revelation of this man who wrote this song. Now Jesus told us of the rich man in hell. You know what he's thinking about? He's thinking about himself. Do you know what the Jew misses by not believing in the Messiah? You open up Matthew to Revelation, a Jew will not listen to you. I've tried that. And they just came out to me, the people I witnessed to. Hey, we don't believe that. Why are you even quoting that to us? You know what a Jew in a temple or synagogue service that they have in America, in Africa, in Europe, in Asia, in Australia? They don't know what is in the afterlife that we know. They don't even know there's an Abraham's bosom or was one. We know the thoughts of a man that's in hell. He wants to think of himself and he wants you to go tell his family about Jesus. We know through Paul what thoughts are. Thoughts are heavenly things. Of being with the Lord Jesus Christ. Our blessed hope. If we haven't died yet. That death for the Christians only the beginning. We found in Psalms earlier. Uh, what is it? Uh, the death of the saints it was pleasing to the Lord. Something like that. They didn't understand that. How can it be pleasing? Happy is he that has the hath the God of Jacob for his help. Okay. When you're dealing with somebody, ask them who their God is of. See what kind of answer you get. 
When you come to a man that, that says he's of the KKK and he's a Christian, who is your God of? They're not going to save Jacob because they're against the Jew. Allah is not the God of Jacob. The Roman Catholic Church is not the God of Jacob. Je Jehovah Witnesses proclaim to be Jehovah and steal the promises of, of the Jews. Well, I'm wondering what they were. If you were to ask a Jehovah Witness when they come to your door and say, What God do you have? Whose God are you serving? And if it's not of Jacob, why would you proclaim Jacob? You know, if you were to say to God, what kind of character was Jacob? Would you be so happy to say, yeah, I'm of a surplanter? Do you realize that if he didn't sell uh, the, his beans for the birthright, it would have been Esau? You know, that's the guy that walked up to his daddy under his mother's uh, commandment to say, Dad, I'm going to deceive you. That's the guy, every time he got in trouble, he sent you a gift. It takes a lot of humbleness to say, uh, Jacob, yeah, that's the God I follow. You know what Jacob was? He was a sinner. You know what I am? I'm a sinner. And Jacob proclaims not Ishmael. My God is Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. That's what I'm proclaiming. Do you realize what that statement is there? That rules out Islam. That rules out the Arabians. That says the Jewish race of people. How many people can you take and crumple that and throw it in the garbage can? The God of Jacob for his help. Whose hope? Now you take a Jew who does not believe the Old Testament. You run to Titus 2.13. Take a take this verse here and say, hey, Mr. Jehovah Witness, do you believe in the Psalms? Yeah, we do. All right, open your Psalms to Psalm 146 and read to me verse 5. Whose hope is in the Lord his God. Now, let's go over to Titus 2.13 and see what it has to say. And try to explain that and to me where they say God and Jesus. That's two different people. Well, my wife makes for me every once in a while a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She doesn't make two sandwiches, one peanut butter and one jelly. She makes she makes one sandwich. And thus the two peanut butter and jelly becomes one sandwich. You can read and two ways. It's either one or more or it's together. This household, there is a Mr. and Mrs. Hayward. We're two different people, but we're yet one. You can explain a marriage in relationship of the Trinity, but, I mean, you can't go and listen, you can't explain the Trinity. Well, you can, but you can't. Well, you march them over right with Titus 2.13 on that one. Because Paul says that our hope today is the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God. That's my life verse. All right. With Titus 2.13, now let's read verse 6, which made the heaven and the earth. Now, I think Paul writes it's either Ephesians. I think it's Ephesians where he speaks about Jesus Christ as the author and the creator of all being things. <laughs> you go run over there with a Jehovah Witness. Paul speaks about Jesus Christ as the creator. Here he is over here, the, the blessed hope of Titus 2.13, Psalms verse 5, now verse 6, the creator. And we heard from a missionary that is right there under the spotlight of the Roman Catholic Church in their city of Rome in their public school systems that they teach evolution and they see no problem with it 
Well, you can't be under the God of Jacob because it says the God of Jacob is your hope and he's the creator. You can't say evolution. You can't say theistic evolution because that's not what Genesis said. Which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which, keep, which keepeth truth forever. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is true. Run that word to John 1.1 1, 1 and see what you find out. Run that to this 1 John chapter 5. It says the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. The Jehovah Witnesses are a satanic. The Bible calls them an antichrist in 2 John. And I'm going to tell you, if you're a part of Jehovah's Witness and you proclaim that Jesus is not God, you will burn in hell. You are not saved. You are not a Christian. And you don't believe that God is the creator over and over and over. You're not saved. You can't choose a God as a savior and nitpick what kind of God you want. My Savior not only died on Calvary's cross, but he made everything that is to be made, that everything is here, even things I don't even know about. There are other planets out there in the solar system we have never even discovered yet. Jesus Christ made that planet. It says everything. The shrimp. God made the shrimp. God made the ants. Which, you now we're talking about the Creator, we're talking about the hope, we're talking about the God of Jacob, which executed judgment for the oppressed. Now, isn't that great? Are you oppressed? Have you ever been oppressed? Will you be oppressed? God will, Jesus Christ will execute judgment. On those that have been oppressed. What kind of God is evolution where man will not get their justice? There'll be no plea bargaining. All unsolved, all unsolved crimes excuse me, will be solved by God. All bodies that have been killed that you never found. God knows exactly where they were. As Tracy and I, we remember a time, I don't know how old it was. There was a time in American history that it was called the Atlanta Child Disappearance. And children were dis disappearing in Atlanta. And I don't know if they ever found out who did that. And if it wasn't a weekly thing, it was almost a daily thing that was in the news and scared parents. I don't know if that's been solved, but God knows everything about it. Amelia Earhart, God knows where her body is. God saw her go down or whatever happened. God knows exactly where Jimmy Hoffa is. He knows if he's in heaven or he knows he's in hell. Oh, you mean the body. God knows that too. God knows what goes on behind the closed doors of the White House of America. God knows it all. Which giveth food to the hungry. And do they thank God for it? There are churches down here, they give food to the hungry, but the food comes from worldly organizations. I won't get into saying. There are organizations out there that are worldly and have nothing to do with God and feed people. That's not what the verse is talking about. We're talking about the God that made the heaven and earth. He's the one that grows the corn and the watermelon. That you put in a gas tank or you put into a cannon and fires how far you can fire watermelon or pumpkin, whatever you want to do, or carve the pumpkin and put a decoration for a false god. And not make pumpkin pie to make me happy. 
I tell you, when I see these television programs and they take food and they stupidly use it and all that, it makes me mad. That's called a waste. If I don't like it, someone probably likes it. God will judge you in what you do with his food. And then you turn around and say, well, we feed the hunger. I know a story that puts over the thing. Oh, we got this this thing we're supporting. We're going to feed the hungry and all that. And I say to myself, I, to the people, I say, how much food did you throw out in the garbage? When I went in your store at, at a certain time, there were chickens, roaster chickens. Now the store is closed. Where did they go? How many how many hungry people did you feed? I worked for a donut place one time, and a woman said, I'm, right, listen, no, not the reason not to, she had children and just barely making it. Asked me if I could take donuts home, and I had to tell her no because it was a company policy. But we're going to feed the hungry. Really? I saw raccoons and, and uh, uh, blackbirds out there enjoying the donuts instead of the humans. I guess the Lord looseth the prisoners. He let Paul go. Paul had the greatest jailhouse ministry from the inside out. Him and Silas. God opened the doors with an earthquake. Peter, Peter is fast asleep and the Holy Spirit had to smack him across the face a couple times. How about the ones that were in Abraham's bosom? God set them free. And God even had them walk around Jerusalem for a little. I mean, just imagine with little name ties. Hi, my name is Joshua. And you know what's so funny? I've got to say this about that. I, I'm going off on a rabbit trail. Doesn't the book of Acts record that a thousand people were added to the church? And two thousand were added to the church. And doesn't it say that? Do you know the Bible says approximately the 40 days that Jesus, from the time he rose in the grave to he ascended to heaven, that looks like for those 40 days that the Old Testament saints were walking around? If not, they were walking around when Jesus died and rose from the grave. Three days to 40 days. Do you realize the Bible does not record that any of them people in Jerusalem got saved from that? Show me, show me God. You, you wouldn't even believe a resurrection. And yet today you got zombie stores. Was it zombie? Yeah, is it zombies that they're afraid of? Zombie apocalypse. That's what I'm trying to think of. They got stores to, to survive the zombie apocalypse. Listen, I'll tell you what the zombie apocalypse is. is the rapture of the church. They're going to come out of the graves. And we ain't going to do nothing to upset you. We're going to do what you want. We're going to do what you've been telling the public school system in America. We're going to do what you've been telling the court system in America. Get God out. Okay, God says, fine. You don't want me there? I'm going to take my people. Have fun. I'll even take my Holy Spirit. God loses the prisoners. You know, God's going to lose us from these bodies one day. These bodies that ache and pain and achy breaking, all that other junk and, and, and sin and, and stink and... and, and God's going to loosen us from this body. He's going to put us in a new body. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. And that's literal blind people. And guess who do you think who do you think opened the eyes of the blind? Who who did that? Where is it recorded in history is somebody opened the eyes of the blind? Okay? Mr. Jehovah Witness, let's look at verse 8, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. You know what that is in the Old Testament? You know what that is in the Bible? That is Lord God Jehovah. And you go read the Gospels and find out the blind people that Jesus, who is capital L, capital O, capital R, Capital D. Lord Jehovah is Jesus Christ. There's no denying it. 
God did not step down. Excuse me, Jesus. I'll take care of this guy's eyes. He didn't do that. And Jesus was a warning. A couple times he spit. Holy spit. One time he pulled a guy out of the city because the city was just didn't believe him. The Lord. And is there, Luke 13, 13. Now that's a, I, I don't know. I didn't check that reference. But there was a woman that was bowed over. Who was that that, that lifted her up and the, and the Pharisees and Sadducees and the scribes got angry with? Who was that? Let me, I want to go here. You stay where you are. Let me go make sure. Let me check this reference out. Luke 13, 13. I want to make sure that this is the reference. And if it's not, it's not like I'm going to be able to find it while this tape is on. But I want to make sure. Because I want to get you Jehovah Witnesses right. I want you to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And Luke 13, 10. And he was and he, Jesus Christ, was teaching in one of the synagogues, Jewish, on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years and was bowed together. Run that back to Psalm. And could in no wise lift up herself. In other words, she was bowed over. She couldn't stand up straight. And when Jesus saw her, J-E-S-U-S, -E he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loose from thy iniquity. Uh, excuse me, infirmity. I'm wrong. Infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. I got Psalms notes here. Is it the same one? Nope, but I'm going to make that note real quick here. If you don't mind. Psalm 146, verse 8. I'm going to make that note there. I'm a Bible note writer. I marked my Bible. So let's go back over here, Mr. Jehovah Witness. Give this to your Jehovah Witness friends. I find where I am. In verse 8, and Lord raise them that are bowed down. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And in Luke 13, it was J, capital E, S, U, S. The Lord Jehovah healed that woman and she glorified God who Jesus did the work. And the Lord loveth the righteous. Do you want God to love you? Jesus loves you. I, I, I saw it on some church sign today or somewhere. I said, Jesus loves you. Not if you're not righteous, he don't love you. When you're trying to do right and trying to do what God wants you to do, the Lord loveth the righteous. If you reject Jesus Christ as your Savior, God, who done everything that you needed to be done, which you couldn't do, you're not righteous. God don't love you. Now, when, when you witness and you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you read your Bible and you pray and you've done something wrong and your Father in Heaven, because you are His Son by adoption, he says, listen, I gotta I gotta punish you, but you know, I love you. That's why I'm punishing you. Because you want to do right and you slip. The Lord preserveth, and that's a word that's been all through Psalms. The strangers. Well, who are the strangers in the Psalms? Them weirdos that, that eat pork and food that has scales. That will take a man that has leprosy and put him in the kingdom. And that were traits of them strange people that were not Jews. They weren't people that had a, a, a hand sticking out of their forehead. 
So God has already told you, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, he's going to go to the Gentiles and he's going to preserve them. Look at that. He revealeth the father. He re yeah. He relieth the fatherless and widow. You know, it's a shame that you even see that the widows were not taken care of in the Book of Acts. Seems like it'd be a manly thing that a woman who whose husband has died and. Children who have no father seem to be taken advantage of. In America, it's completely opposite. We go on the other side of the scale. We take care of them with, with everything that, that they don't need, that everything they do, that, that, that they give. We call it a form of welfare. They make them lazy and sluggards. And you'll see that's one of the judgments that happened to Israel, why they went to captivity in Babylon. Because one of the things, they were not taking care of the fatherless and the widows. And it was in the law that they were. A woman did not get a job in Bible times. There was no equal opportunity employer. But the way of the wicked, all right, he turneth upside down. Well, I've seen the wait, wait to the final judgment, the great white throne judgment. Can you, can you just picture God taking that person, you take that little, pick him up by his feet and cast him head first into hell? I mean, isn't that how you dive into water? The way of man, Proverbs said, is death. Death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. The Lord shall reign forever. God is still on the throne. And the enemy that's in charge right now still has to do what God tells him to do. And God says, no, he can't do like a public uh, a puppet uh, government the Lord shall reign forever even thy God all right that rules out all gods O Zion well you would think today that Allah with the dumb of the rock You know what that Allah and Muhammad teach how to teach women and widows and, and the fatherless children? You know what how they treat them? They teach they treat them a, a uh, boy I messed up. They treat them opposite of what God says how to treat them. So I guess that's not the God of the Bible. How you to treat the widow and the fatherless? It's a word that's called mercy and grace <laughs> and make them blessed, happy. That's anything but Islam. Unto all generations and closing, praise ye the Lord. With everything from verse 1 to verse 10, it's a sandwich. Praise ye the Lord, praise ye the Lord, and everything in between. There is one specific God, and there is one specific Jesus, and they are both one. And you are seeing, you see that with scripture, with scripture, studying to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. So what do you say about the Jehovah Witnesses? 
They don't study the Bible, even though as much time they put in. They pervert it. And there is no salvation if you don't proclaim Jesus as God. I'm sorry. That's what the Bible proclaims. That is a necessity. And it's, if a Jehovah Witness will proclaim that Jesus is not God, there is no salvation. Now, are there Jehovah Witnesses? There are, are they all not saved? No, there, there's some in there that believe Jesus is God. They just... But the doctrine of their religion is Jesus is not God. And we've seen through the Psalm, Psalm 146, and the New Testament, Luke, Titus, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, the writings of Paul, the letters and epistles of Paul, that Jesus is God. And back it up with what we read in Luke, what I read to you in Luke 13. Jesus is God, and God is Jesus. We just saw it. Now there's a hymn, there's a psalm of praise sings about the Lord Jesus Christ. That you never, you never hear him sung. You never hear him put the music. All about Jesus. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. And when I think that God, his son, not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art.